Aldous Meringtorer. Welcome everyone to the Committee of Adjustment meeting of July 30th, 2019. My name is Ron Chatta, Committee Chair for today's meeting. This meeting is the Committee of Adjustment. The Committee of Adjustment uh, is composed with the five citizen members who are appointed by Brampton City Council. The committee is authorized by the Ontario Planning Act to consider applications for minor variance from the provision of the City of Brampton Zoning Bylaw. The committee also consider application for consent, sometime referred to as land division applications, which includes severing a new lot from an existing lot, a lot addition easement, mortgages or leases in excess of 21 years. I would like to introduce the committee members to my immediate left member, Desiree Doppler, to my far left member, Rod Power, to my immediate right uh, member, Anna Christina Marcus, and to my far, uh, to my far uh, right uh, member, David Cope. And my name is Ron Chatta, committee, committee chair. Seated at the table in front of the committee is Ms. Jeannie Myers, secretary treasurer of the Committee of Adjustment. And seated near the podium, we have city staff members who will assist the committee today. I would uh, request the staff to introduce Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. My name is Elizabeth Corazola. I'm the manager of zoning and sign bylaw services. Mr. Chair, my name is Crystal Walkie, and I'm the manager of development services. Himanshu Katyal, development planner, development services. My name is Yin Xiao, development planner. Thank you. Uh, before we consider today's application, the committee has some procedural matters to take care of. Uh, the first is uh, adoptions of the minute. The minutes of the previous meeting are uh, presented in today's agenda. Committee members, any question, concern about these minutes? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, uh, if not, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 9, 2019? Uh, by Ms. Marcus, seconded by Mr. Cope. All in favor? The next item, we have the declaration of interest under the Municipal Conflict uh, of uh, Interest Act. Uh, does any member have any declaration of pecuniary interest to de declare or any matter being discussed today? Seeing none. Uh, now we move on to withdrawals uh, or deferral. Uh, anyone in the audience? Okay, I'll just come to you. We have, I guess, a couple of uh, requests. And you can come, no problem. Okay. It's for application number A19-8 uh, for 8155 Can you please check if the microphone is on because you oh. don't want to stop or stop and... It's on. Okay. Please go ahead. Sorry, the application number? A19-078. A19-8155 Torbrim Road. 8155 Torbrim. Yes. So. Sure, any reason you want to defer? Would you like to add? We Your name and address for the record, please? Uh, my name is Sne, S N E H, Sne Bamra. I'm from N Architecture. Uh -huh. Um, do you need the address for the firm as well? It's 8155 Charbrum. For the address, uh, for yes, the location, for you, yes. Yes, for your address. Uh, for our um, office, it's 9120 Leslie Street, mm -hmm. Suite 208 in Richmond Hill. Mm -hmm. Sure, we'll... Uh, uh, okay. And the reason of the deferral, the reason is uh, we received some comments from TRCA yeah, regarding I setback guess. requirements for uh, regulatory floodplain. Mm -hmm. um, we have a drawing prepared to go and we have preliminary approval from TRCA, but we need to resubmit drawings to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, we would prefer a one month deferral if um, we can submit the drawings in the next day or two. Okay, anyone in the audience here to speak for this application? Seeing none, uh, staff, could you please read your comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, we are supportive of the deferral. Um, 
given the circulation notice timeframes, we would like this deferred at least two meetings so we have an opportunity to meet with the applicant and ensure we have everything ready before we come back to this committee. Sorry, one so second. If it, uh, if it was moved, brought forward to the September 10th meeting, September I think that would 10th? be appropriate. Yes. Okay. I would request to the technical team at the back if uh, we are not hearing properly, if the microphones are not working. I thought it's me, but I checked with my colleague <laughs> to <laughs> make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if somehow they can work out something on it. Okay, so uh, September 10th meeting? We can agree to September 10th. Okay. So, Committee member, how would you like to deal with uh, uh, the requesting September 10th uh, meeting? Okay. Putting forward a motion. Putting forward a motion to defer the application to September 10th. I just want to check with Ms. Myers. Uh, is it okay for the circulation? Okay. So, motion by Ms. Duffler for September 10th, application A19078. Seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? Okay, so your application has been deferred to the next day. Thank you. Application number B19019. Do we have, please come forward. <clears throat> Excuse me, through the chair. We do have a written request for a deferral that we should probably acknowledge. Uh, from, for this application, I believe, that's why. No, we don't, sir. We have a written request for B19012. Sorry, one second. B19012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my apologies. Uh, if yes. you can please go back, uh, we'd like to call application B19012 as they have the deferral request. <laughs> good morning. Good, good morning, members of committee. My name is Oz Kamal. I'm uh, the agent for the owners. Uh, we had requested the deferral because from the last committee of adjustment, <clears throat> there were access issues that were raised with our consent application. Um, it was uh, requested by staff that we have a pre-consultation with, um, with the city to discuss access. We did that, but the pre-consultation was scheduled late June, and the timing for resubmitting anything to get people on side was early July. There just wasn't enough time. Um, based on the comments that we had at the pre-consultation, I think that we're going to need probably about two months in order to um, get transportation staff on side with what we're trying to do, or at least have them consider some access options. Uh -huh. um, that being said, I know there's about a one, there's like a one month s circulation time that's required, so m perhaps maybe October would be best for us. Uh -huh. Um, and then hopefully by then we have transportation staff on site, and if not, I'll come back in October and perhaps request an additional deferral to give more time to staff. Okay, sure. Uh, we'll just uh, hear what staff uh, has to say about it. And uh, before I go to staff, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Yes, we're talking about uh, Northwest corner of Way Drive West and Credit Fuel. Seeing none, staff, uh, could you please make your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff is in support of the deferral of this application to no later than December 3rd, 2019. Mm -hmm. This will allow the applicant to come to the uh, uh, committee anytime before December 3rd, and uh, it, it will just give them some flexibility if they cannot meet one or the other uh, hearing deadline. Okay, so no, I we're, guess... We're, uh, we're good with that. We can come back anytime before if it gets sorted out. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just we'll make the request if it gets sorted out ahead of time. So anytime before December 3rd? That's correct. So on or before On December. or before. But remember, any question, comment? If not, seeking a motion. Motion to defer uh, honor before December 3rd by Mr. Cobb, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? Thank you. Welcome. Any other return requests we have? Yes. 
B19012, uh, ma'am, you can please come now. They have, no? Here's the chair. I just want to confirm that uh, for the applicant for B19019, is that the one you're calling? They have not requested a deferral. There is a staff recommendation yep. to defer, but we don't have a written request from the applicant to defer the application. But even if the staff is uh, uh, recommending, it's not proper if I call them first? To you, through the chair, um, you, you can have the agent speak to the application, but if she or he is wanting to go forward with the application, sure. we must provide them with the opportunity to do so. Okay. So, uh, committee members, I think we should hear them and see what they say. Anybody else here uh, from any other application wants a deferral request? Wants to withdraw or defer any application? Okay. If not, then uh, I guess uh, what we can do, we'll just uh, call them when their term turn is, so that will be better. If no other uh, request, I would like to move on to my remarks. For those unfamiliar with the Committee of Adjustment Procedure and Process, I would like to give a brief explanation and scope. Following some procedure matter that we have already undergone, the Secretary Treasurer will call the applications by announcing the application number, the name of the applicant and address of the property subject to the application. The applicant or authorized agent representing the ap applicant will then come to the podium, state their name and address for the record, and then present the application. I request that you reserve any question or comment pertaining uh, to the staff report until after planning staff has had an opportunity to present. Uh, if there's anyone in attendance who wishes to speak to a particular application, you will be given the opportunity to do so when the application is presented. Any decision made here today may be appealed to the local planning appeal tribunal, previously through the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, appeals received in the city clerk's office associated with minor variance and consent applications will be processed and forwarded to LPAT. This process may be com commenced with the secretary treasurer by filing a completed appeal form and filing fee within the prescribed 20-day appeal period. In information pertaining to the appeal process may be obtained by contacting uh, the secretary treasurer within the city clerk's office. Now we move on to the new consent applications. Calling application B19018251-4682, Ontario, Inc. Property is located at 3455 Queen Street East. Morning. Good morning, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Eric Bertson. I'm from CanDevCon Limited, and we're the agent here on behalf of the owner 3455 Queen Street East. Um, the purpose of our application here today is um, to request a consent from committee to grant a, uh, an easement about 97 meters uh, and five meters in depth. And it is, uh, the purpose of the easement is to facilitate a future storm sewer for the adjacent property to us at uh, 8970 Gorway Drive. Okay, any members, any question, comments, concern? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application in accordance with the criteria set out by the Planning Act, and staff are in agreement that application B19018 is supportable with no conditions. Okay, I guess you. <laughs> you're We're fine with the conditions, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. So, uh, members, uh, no conditions as approval, so looking for a motion. Through the chair, I just want to acknowledge that we do have two conditions that are requested Sec by the Secretary Treasurer. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry,
So the two conditions by Secretary Treasurer. Did you get the opportunity? Yes, to I did. Yeah, we're we're okay with that. You're okay. Yeah. So, so I guess this is uh, the conditional approval. So motion to approve with conditions by Ms. Safo, seconded by Mr. Mr. Koch. Okay. All in favor? Yes. So, thank you. Thank you. Calling application B19019, Cauldron Gaspar Limited. Property is located at 9980 Mississauga Road. Anyone for this application? B19019? Good morning, morning, members of the committee. My name is Helen Vastus, and I'm here to speak on this application B19-019. I represent Caldron Gaspars Limited. Mm -hmm. The address uh, for the subject lands is 9980 Mississauga Road. We're requesting the consent of the Committee of Adjustments to sever a parcel of land currently having a total area of approximately 100 acres. The effect of the application will be to create a new lot having a frontage on Mississauga Road of approximately 320 meters or 1,050 feet and a depth of approximately 700 meters or 2,297 feet and an area of approximately 50 acres. The purpose of the application is to facilitate equal division of the assets held by Caldron gas bars as a result of a butterfly transaction. Currently, there is one company, Caldron, that owns the land. Uh, this company has two shareholders, and which are shareholders slash directors. They're getting old, they're having health issues, and they each want to deal with their interests through their will to protect their families. Uh, we've spoken to lawyers and accountants, and they said the best way to do this is to uh, go through a butterfly transaction, which will basically split the assets equally, 50-50, because each partner is a 50% shareholder, and the assets will be uh, split equally into two separate companies. So right now we have the one company with the two shareholders. After the butterfly transaction, we will have two companies, each shareholder having the same, their own company, but it, it will be the same owners. Uh, there is no development proposed. The lands will remain exactly as they are. The only difference will be seen in the registry office where in title will be held by the two separate companies as opposed to the one company. The property is located within the growth plan and the application is in conformity with this plan. The proposal does, does conform with the provincial policy statements as no significant land use changes are proposed. The severance will not impact the outcome of the GTA West environmental study or the focused analysis area. The proposal is not the subject of an application under the Planning Act for an OP amendment, a zoning bylaw amendment, or a minor variance. Again, I just want to stress the fact that they are severing the land so that each partner can deal with his lands separately. We have received a number of comments. Uh, the, the application was circulated. Uh, keep in mind that section 51, subsections 24 and 25 of the Planning Act speaks to the criteria and the conditions, and the conditions imposed must be reasonable, having regards to the nature of the development proposed. Again, in this uh, instance, we are only requesting a severance. The region of Peel had a number of comments. Uh, under planning, they want to ensure that the corridor is protected. Uh, again, the plan conforms with the provincial policy statements, so the planned corridors will continue to be protected because there will be no development. Under transportation, they're requesting a number of land dedications, reciprocal cross-access easements, closure of gas station accesses, 
again, uh, I think that's too premature because we are not developing the property. When the property goes to the development stage, those conditions can be imposed and they will be complied with. To date, uh, two uh, land dedication uh, requests have been made in the past and they have been complied with, once when the gas bar was developed and once when the driving range was developed. So they will, they may have uh, the opportunity to request further land dedications, but again, those will be done when there is a development plan in place. Uh, any access matters, again, will be dealt at the time of development. The lands will not be landlocked. Servicing, uh, there is uh, storm, sanitary, uh, and water, and we will be providing an easement down the length of the property on Mississauga Road to ensure that both parcels have adequate supplies of water and storm and sanitary services. Uh, we will be doing a reference plan of the lands that will show the two equal parts and the re reference plan will show the easement. Um, Trans Canada Pipeline had some comments. Again, we conform with those comments. Their comments dealt with any digging, building, constructing. Again, we're not doing any of that. Uh, the tenant, Suncor on the corner, was informed of the application. He has uh, no comments. MTO, we just received some comments this morning for MTO. And again, this severance will not affect the study area, will not affect any planned or proposed corridors because there will be absolutely no development on the lands. So uh, to recap, we are just looking to transfer the lands from one company that owns the entire parcel into two separate <coughs> companies. The owners will be the exact same people and there will be no development on the lands. <coughs> Thank you. I'm here to I understand uh, that the owners will be same, but once it gets severed, it can be sold the very next day. Well, it could be sold right, right now. <laughs> it could be sold right but now. But together? Yeah. Not separately? Yes. Right? And, anyway. and in all fairness, I mean, you know, the owners, if they're going to be smart about it, they're not going to sell it separately. They're going to work together to sell, sell it together. This is purely done for succession planning purposes. But anyway, many members, uh, any question, comment, concern at this point to the applicant? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff's report does recommend deferral of this application for up to one year, as uh, you have information in front of you from MTO about the uh, GTA West Transit Corridor, and that that's underway with public consultation beginning later this year. We would like that to be completed before we make uh, decisions on applications such as this. We also if it was to go forward, would be recommending refusal. It does not meet the lot area under the zoning bylaw. There would have to be associated minor variance applications with this, which would have not been filed. As a result, we are recommending deferral so that we can maybe clear up some of these technical matters. Um, because if it is approved, to your point, Mr. Chair, once a severance, always a severance, and uh, staff are not supportive of that at this time. Staff just uh, in their comments, uh, I do acknowledge we have a letter from MTO and uh, also we have another correspondence uh, from planning coordinator on behalf of France, Canada, Pipeline Limited, as you already indicated. So uh, staff is uh, actually recommending a deferral, which is, uh, sorry, staff is Am I right? Yeah, okay. deferral. Uh, no later than July 30th. So basically around one year, I would say. Any follow-up uh, comments? Again, my only comment would be as I understand staff some concerns and conditions can be put with this severance that uh, no development um, be allowed. Mm -hmm. I know the comments are with regards to minimum lot size for agricultural lots, but clearly this is not an agricultural lot, nor will it be used for one, and currently there's a driving range on the property and a gas station. So, uh, and once the focus study area is finished and it goes into the secondary plan, uh, it will not be used as, a, as an agricultural lot. It will proceed to development. And this will not affect the orderly 
development of the municipality because we are looking at 50 acre lots here, which is quite large. So I understand that there are some technical comments and some issues, but uh, considering what we're asking for and what we're trying to do, I don't think that uh, uh, it's unreasonable to request a severance of such a large parcel. And again, you can uh, impose conditions that we come back with a reference plan, with the required easement, and that no development be allowed on the subject lands until all of these other studies are completed. I guess given the fact, uh, the correspondence from uh, the another, uh, especially MTO uh, and uh, uh, staff's uh, <coughs> opinion, I tend to agree with staff. Uh, uh, and, but the rest of the committee can speak. Uh, I, I'm going to ask them uh, right after my comments. Uh, I think uh, if we defer one year, then meantime you can uh, work with the staff and hopefully by then uh, we'll have some clarity from MTO for the future. And at the same time, you can discuss your future plans about the property with the staff. Because uh, if you recall, uh, at this point, the staff are recommending deferral. If not, if committee or if let's say we like to hear this application today, the staff's uh, uh, recommendation is to refuse the application. Yeah. Uh, of course, we would prefer a deferral than a refusal, right? absolutely. So, <laughs> so absolutely. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Yes. Um, variance. As yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And my second question is, uh, when did you make the application for this? Uh, back in June. In June? Yes. So June, July. Okay. This year. It was uh, just a few months ago. So just over month. 30 days ago? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. In terms of the chair's comments, I would suggest that um, just over 30 days is very little time for staff to uh, work through the file. Okay. So I, would, I would follow the chair's lead. <laughs> So looking for a motion. Uh, uh, motion to defer. Motion to defer till uh, July 30th, or before, sorry, no later than July 30th, 2020. Yes, sir. By Mr. Power. Do we have seconder? Seconded by uh, Ms. Duffner. All in favor? Thank you very much for this opportunity. Calling application B19020, Bass Canada Inc. Properties located at 1800 Clark Boulevard. Good morning. morning. My name is Dave Cherzenko, C-H-A-R-E-Z-E-N-K-O. I'm a land use planner with Stantec Consulting Limited. I am the applicant, uh, sorry, I'm the agent uh, for the applicant BASF Canada, Inc., um, for their property at 1800 Clark Boulevard. Uh, the property is currently owned and occupied by BASF. Uh, they occupy an industrial building on roughly half of the existing uh, property. The uh, northern uh, portion of the property, which is identified on the sketch as the lands to be severed, um, were identified as a potential expansion area for BASF operations. Uh, over time, BS, uh, BASF have determined that that um, a future expansion plan is not in their interests uh, and are seeking uh, consent from the Committee of Adjustments in order to sever uh, that portion of the land so that it could be in brought into productive uh, use within the city. Um, at this time, we do not have uh, a development proponent for the severed lands, um, so I'd like to spend a little bit of time on the conditions if that uh, would be okay with the committee um, because uh, as I think you were mentioning on the previous application, uh, staff didn't have uh, 
a full uh, amount of time to review it, and I think I can add a little bit of clarity to some of the conditions that are being addressed, and if it satisfies the committee, um, perhaps we could uh, remove some of the conditions. Um, condition number one is a, a standard condition for the certificate fee. We have an issue with that. I uh, guess uh, uh, when we talk about the conditions, we should hear the staff first. Okay. So then, uh, as, the, as a follow-up, you can talk about Sure. That, I think that's that's way is better, okay. in my opinion. Okay? Mm -hmm. Committee members, any question, comment? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff are supportive of the application, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if you want me to read through other conditions, or we can... Uh, I guess so I'll uh, read through normally. The conditions. <laughs> um, that a sector, um, the first condition is that a secretary treasurer's certificate fee shall be paid in the amount current at the time of the issuance of the certificate of the secretary treasurer. Two, that prior to issuance of the certificate of secretary treasurer, arrangement satisfactory to region appeal public works department shall be made with respect to the installation or upgrade of new or existing services and or possible required private water and sanitary sewer servicing easement. Three, prior to assurance of the certificate of secretary treasurer, the owner provide comprehensive access and servicing information and make arrangements to provide easements for access and stormwater management to the satisfaction of the Director of Environment and Development Engineering Services. For prior to the issuance of the certificate of the Secretary Treasurer, easements, which may include blanket easements over the severed and retained lands, may be required to be conveyed to the satisfaction of the Commissioner of Planning and Development Services. The Commissioner of Public Works and Engineering and the Regional Appeal Public Works Department for purposes including but not limited to parking, access, services, maintenance, in any other purposes identified by the city, regional appeal, and all utility agencies. That approval of draft reference plans as applicable together with terms of any associated easements shall be obtained at the Committee of Adjustment Office and the required number of prints of the resultant deposited reference plans shall be received. And six, that the owner be responsible for all costs associated with the preparation, deposit, and registration of any or all reference plans and easements required. Thank you. So do you understand and accept these conditions? I understand the conditions. I'd like the opportunity to sure. provide a little bit of additional information. As sure. I was mentioning, uh, at the start of this conversation, um, staff had a limited period of time to review uh, some of the details of the application, some of the existing information of this site, and I think I can provide a little bit of direction on that, um, and hopefully, uh, to your satisfaction, address some of the, uh, the conditions and resolve them here and there. Um, this is the existing servicing and grading plan that was approved by the City of Brampton at the time of development of the subject lands. Um, I've highlighted here a couple of um, connection points. This is with respect to condition number two. Um, so the nature of condition number two is that the Public Works Department of the region um, is concerned that there be any water or sanitary sewer connections that would cross from the retained portion of the lands into the severed lands or vice versa. Um, essentially, that the severed lands would create their servicing connection to municipal um, sewers and water feeds through the retained land, so two separate properties. And they would prefer, um, as, as their standard practice, each individual property have their own water and sewer connections to municipal co um, uh, connections. So, um, as you can see, I've highlighted here, the retained lands is the south portion of the property, the severed lands is the north portion of the property. Um, I've highlighted for you the existing water and sanitary connections to the retained lands. They both um, directly uh, 
deal with the retained lands. There is no conflict with the severed lands uh, proposed, um, or existing, sorry. Uh, so the severed lands can create their own independent water and sanitary sewer connections um, that do not impact uh, the retained lands. And like I said, I, I don't think the region's public works department had these plans available to them at the time of review. Um, so I'm just making this information available and if it satisfies the committee, um, we can remove that particular condition. Um, number, condition number three and number four, um, I can use the same plan, hoping you can see it. Um, there are two potential easements with respect to the retained lands in favor of the severed lands. Actually, this is a little bit more detail. So the first is around access. So currently, 1800 Clark Boulevard provides access from Clark Boulevard um, to their primary parking areas for staff, visitors, etc. And they also provide a secondary access off Walker Drive, which is primarily a truck access. Um, this, these are the loading docks here. Um, it's used exclusively for the industrial use of the property. Uh, staff at the, uh, at the city have concerns where um, and we don't have a development proponent for the severed lands at the moment, but where the access to the severed lands would be located. If it were located at the south end of the severed lands, it'd be in close proximity to the existing truck access to 18, uh, the existing um, development uh, on the retained lands. And they're um, suggesting that potentially a shared access easement would be required. <coughs> Um, I did have a brief conversation, and anywhere north of uh, that southern property boundary, we could provide a separate access point to Walker Drive. But uh, as I mentioned, we don't have a development proponent yet. We anticipate having a uh, development partner uh, within uh, the remainder of this year, well within the year that we have to satisfy conditions. So this particular uh, issue can be addressed, hopefully without um, the need for an easement over the property. Um, the second easement issue is there is a catch basin for stormwater management mm -hmm. um, conveyance right here on the retained portion. It's actually draining the severed land, but the catch basin and the conveyance route through to the municipal sewer is through the retained land. So um, staff are commenting that uh, a drainage easement would be required uh, in favor of the severed lands over the retained lands. Um, this catch basin is actually used to also um, drain the, the northern portion of the retained lands. We anticipate that when the severed lands are developed, that they will have their own stormwater management program um, and uh, conveyance routes to most likely to Walker uh, that can be addressed. So if um, through the development of, uh, process for the severed lands, uh, we can address that particular issue um, and most likely um, don't need an easement for that particular drainage uh, corridor or conveyance route. Uh, the remainder of the items are our standard uh, items we have no issue with. There are some uh, conditions provided by the Secretary, Treasurer, I guess all, we have the same, yeah, same conditions, yeah. Staff, any follow-up? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, so as the applicant's agent has indicated, they feel there is potential for the conditions to be cleared within a year. If they're not cleared within a year, then certainly the, the application becomes null and void. If they do not have a development partner at this time and are not able to identify the easements, then perhaps the application is premature. So um, the applicant staff are supportive of going ahead with the 
with the hope that they can satisfy the conditions within a year, and if, they, if they're not satisfied, then the application's void and they'll have to come back um, anyway. So it's really up to the applicant if they'd like to defer it or if they'd like to move forward. I tend to agree with staff on this one as well. It's fine. I, right? We have no issue with satisfying the conditions. Yeah. So, so you're in agreement with the staff's recommendations? Yes. Any members? With no further discussion, looking for a motion. Motion to approve with the recommendations. With I'll staff's recommendations. Second. By Ms. Stoffler, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Calling application B19021, Callaway Reef Brand Recording. The property is located on Airport Road. Good morning, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Lily Wu from Smart Centers, acting as the agent of the owner, Callaway Reed Brampton Incorporated. We are here today um, to request a consent from the committee to grant an access easement for our site at 9910 Airport Road. Um, the access easement is requested for a new lot frontage for a new self-storage facility that is proposed to be on site. And upon receipt of the consent for the access easement, we will be satisfying the conditions for clearance for the severance, which will be um, the last step of the process. We've received, um, so we've also received the notice for the rec of recommendation with a number of conditions, and we agree with all of the proposed conditions. Sure. Many members, any question from Chairman at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? So you, Mr. Chair, the application is supportable subject to the following condition being imposed. Um, that the associate site plan application SP18-028 be approved within one year of the decision of the committee or as extended at the discretion of the Director of Development Services upon a written request for extension from the owner. Okay. So you understand, obviously, an yep. agreement. Uh, if no further business... Through the, through the chair, I just want to confirm that that yep. condition is... Um, has been amended to a period of one year as opposed to 120 days. Okay. We have, uh, did you get the opportunity to read the uh, uh, Secretary Treasurer's recommendations? Yep. A Secretary Treasurer's certificate fee shall be paid in the amount current at the time of the issuance of the Secretary Treasurer's certificate. We're agreeable with that condition. Okay. And uh, Ms. Marsh, you were mentioning about uh, not uh, within 120 days, so one year? Through the chair, staff has just put forward, I think, an amended condition, whereas previously they were uh, recommending 120 days. They mm -hmm. are now recommending one year, within one year. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, if no further discussion, looking for a motion. So motion to uh, mo motion to uh, motion to approve the staff's recommendations and the, uh, the change in one year. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Cove and seconded by Ms. Okay. Marcus. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Thank you, Chair and Committee members. Calling applications B19009 and related applications A19063, A19064, Kashmir and Bupinder Nisar. The property is located at 7522 Credit View Road. Good morning. Morning. I was still before you. I was before you three weeks ago for a deferred application where we sought a deferral or made a motion for deferral so that MTO could weigh in and we could also get some comments from the Heritage Department. I am 
capable of going over the arguments and rationale I had stated before, if you'd like. However, I think it's important to note that the information we, uh, the intent of our deferral has been met by having more fulsome comments from MTO. I immediately called a gentleman by the name of Pascal Doucette, who is the heritage district planner for this neighborhood, for this district neighborhood, and we had a fulsome discussion about the level of development that is supportable under the plan and the policies within that plan that are in conformity with the existing nature of this site. It was an old OMB uh, decision and a number of sp site-specific policies and were, were put in place in the zoning and the accuracy of our variances have captured those, those policies and are here today to move forward with a straight consent application uh, knowing that the variances are in keeping with the policies of the Heritage District Conservation Plan, the official plan, the growth plan, the provincial policy statement, and the zoning bylaw. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think, first off, I would like to place this on the prompter. You will have this in your package. This is received yesterday morning from MTO. This is not the person who had weighed in asking for a deferral from MTO at our last hearing. That was a person by the name of Phil, Phil Ianacito. I, I spoke and tried to reach to Phil, and he is on temporary leave for uh, an undisclosed reason. This person, uh, Mr. Capel, instead weighed in and said that they are evaluating a transit study area and would like this to be deferred so as to not conflict with future transit needs. Uh, and after speaking with my client, who is here in the stands with also a representative from the mayor's office, uh, this is not an acceptable reason for deferral, given that the nature of and the power of MTO for expropriating lands in, in, to the benefit of their transitway area it is something that consent and what we're requesting today would not interfere with. They are fully capable of taking land from us in the future if we have two pieces or one piece to take. That is not something that would affect the transitway area. And I'd be happy to answer any of the questions you may have. I think it's clear from our presentation three weeks ago and the amount of time we dealt with this application through staff that you have very fulsome comments to deal with this today. Any members, any question or comments at this point? Seeing that anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application or these applications? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The report before you today, uh, staff are recommending that the application be refused. Uh, staff have communicated on several occasions that this application, in our opinion, needs an official plan amendment and is only a bylaw amendment and not a committee of adjustment uh, process. And that is what we are recommending to go forward to, so that we can have a comprehensive view of the site, the, the conditions and anything that would be required uh, for zoning compliance as well. We also have the correspondence from MTO today, which we, we have received. Uh, they do recommend deferral. As with the other applications we've heard today, uh, we've suggested deferral of up to one year to July 30th, 2020 in order to work out the MTO issues. Uh, staff's position on this will be that an, uh, they go through an application process for official plan amendment and zoning bylaw, that they file a pre-application uh, so we can start that process in advance of that. They can run that for process concurrently with the MTO uh, study. Um, at a minimum, staff are recommending deferral to July 30th, 2020. Um, but our, at this point, our position is that we refuse the application. Okay. So is, uh, at this point, uh, what my understanding is, uh, so this la the letter we received today, that's uh, MTO, uh, so what they are suggesting to defer for not to exceed one year, uh, and but the staff is suggesting uh, not to support these applications, right? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Any members, any questions, comments, concerns? Study for what they can do with the property. Can you please speak with loud? Yes, excuse me. We, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we've been working with the owner of this property since they purchased it to do feasibility on what is appropriate development under the policies that they are restricted to. And under the current zoning, there is there, there is an ability to do a group home. And that's something that would comply with uh, the intent of the official plan, the zoning bylaw, and so forth. And uh, when we went through the process for a permit 
uh, for an illegal basement uh, renovation, that which was which MTO weighed in on. We learned that there was a catchment area for their regulatory process that basically denied anything happening here, um, which we were able to circumnavigate because this portion of the property, the residential portion, because it's a split zoning, is outside their zone, is outside their regulatory area, and they approved this permit. So that is what gave us the idea, is, is why are we getting tangled up with a catchment area on a portion of the property that we can develop? That we do have application, that we do have the rights within the existing zoning to permit certain uses. Pascal Doucet, the heritage planner, was consulted and he would support providing that we're not de taking away from the curb appeal that the heritage district so jealously uh, tries to guard. So any impact to the to what the development or what the building looks like from the street would not be supported, and so a parking lot would be required to increase and provide parking for a group home in, in the existing home, but that would be triggered on both zones. Uh, and so by splitting the land down the middle, uh, the timing is, is convenient to allow for the uses that are permitted under the zoning of the estate lots of the residential portion of the site to move forward without being tangled up with the agricultural. And this whole property, given its size, if only a sliver of it is within a regulatory area of some approval agency, the entirety of it gets brought into this additional process. So we're trying to clean up and, and disentangle uh, from certain requirements that a severance would address. Uh, this property is subject to site plan approval. Uh, there's no development application as per yet because we'd like to develop just the residential portion. And when that comes into play, staff then have all the tools capable to ask for the official plan amendment, rezoning, and so forth. All of that is something that we're willing to accept as a condition should a development application come forward. But it is, in, in, in with, with respect, I say that it is inappropriate to speculate what could be done here when we're dealing with the application in front of us. If we look at the rules and regulations around a severance, it's quite clear that we are not meant to say what we're using it for. We're saying, can we do what we can with the available land conditions? And any variances that need to capture and preserve uh, the, the character of this land or the, the traits preserved under this land zoning will be addressed, and I've done so. So to say and to push further than just the letter of the uh, knee-jerk policy statements that we get from certain approval agencies is appropriate when we're talking about good planning because the intent of some of these requests is so that they can have a very clean, easy time dealing with these things. However, if we look further at the powers that license them to expropriate land for their transit waste studies and for the powers for staff to impose conditions like site, like site plan approval or like rezoning and official plan amendment, those are all enshrined whenever we actually get our feet wet. And this is not an application that is seeking to do any of that. And were we to go forward with something more fulsome in a, in a development setting, then we would, of course, be triggering all of these requirements that we, which we would have to comply with. Asking for them at this stage is not appropriate. I hope I haven't gone off on a tangent uh, too much to not answer your question. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a further question. In terms of heritage uh, consent approval, do you have anything in writing? I would have to defer to staff. I spoke to Pascal Doucette uh, as soon as I left this hearing three weeks ago, and there's the and I also uh, put on that the overhead in our last hearing a policy from the Heritage District Conservation Plan Section 3.30 that looked at preserving the existing agricultural and residential state uses, and there with what we're asking to do here today, nothing in this land is changing in feel and look and taste. Uh, it's simply at a registry setting and nothing about the planning instruments that staff still have in their bailiwick, and the MTO still has at their disposal, is licensed by a, an, upper, uh, an upper approval agency, would, would deny them what they're asking for uh, by this refusal. They have every right to ask for this official plan amendment and rezoning when we make a development application, and they are more appropriately able to restrict site plan approval until we go through that. And restricting a severance uh, is, is not, is, it doesn't, has no bearing on conformity with the Heritage District Conservation Plan, because well, these, these places would provide. disagree with you on that matter. Um, we're not familiar with the district, and we don't know what the requirements are. We have no idea of what um, the, the traditional lot sizes are for the area. So that's not something that's within our understanding uh, to discuss. Uh, and that would be my primary concern. My right. secondary concern is there's been quite a history with this property. And I guess what you're requesting is what was uh, originally being recommended by staff. So uh, now that we've got some um, 
history on it through uh, another um, provincial entity, uh, mm -hmm. it seems a little bit out of my territory and my understanding to make any comments on it. And I think those are the complications with this property. Right. Um, and that's why for, for, for my purposes, uh, I don't know about the rest of the committee, um, but the best that I could probably do is defer. Um, otherwise, um, I would have to support the staff's recommendation. So, you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate very much those comments. It's important that you have written understanding from the heritage planner. I don't know why you don't have that already uh, in your package, but we'd be happy to ask this person, not just in a phone call to me, but to have written response. I think staff are, uh, have a bit of a template of refusal that they're inserting here again, based on its history. If we were to defer to get uh, the Heritage District Planner to, to re recommend that things such as the average lot size and the uses of these lands are in conformity, which I think the previous OMB decision already in, or has been enshrined in the zoning of these lands already, I could just speak to my client to see if he's willing to support that, but it's also important to understand that if the committee does not feel equipped to deal with it today, that we have other appeal instruments that we may use at our disposal that could perhaps make a better decision. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh -huh. just a question of staff. Um, if uh, the applicant is looking to sever land and feels that this is appropriate under a minor variance application through this committee, the staff are feeling that the ch this should uh, be under bylaw amendment and well, rezoning. Yes. And uh, could you just pre please provide us with uh, some comments related to that? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. So the primary concern with this is the MTO comments and that our previous indication from them is they may require up to a 30 meter road winding along this land. That would be the severed portion instead of having 50 meters of frontage with 20 meters of frontage. So then we have this lot that's left that may or may not be usable. So um, that is the primary reason for us not supporting this is that, as well as the applicant has mentioned a group home. Um, a group home is not permitted. On this, um, in the staff report, you have, I think on page three of the report, very specific details of what shall be permitted. And it's a single detached dwelling shall be permitted. Um, so there is a further process that they would need to go to through to um, evaluate the appropriateness of the request. At that time, that's the time to look at this site comprehensively with MTO and access and servicing and determine everything through that process. So uh, staff's position is that it be an official plan amendment and zone change and that we have the ability to ensure that we've reflected MTO's concerns at the same time. We are, circulate them, it's adjacent to the roads and they have given comments on this specifically. And then just one further question, if I might. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, in terms of uh, your suggestion uh, during the presentation or during the questions, was that you may want to also support a deferral, even though you may still remain with your current comments? Yeah, staff, staff uh, does not support the application, uh, but we do see that MTO said to defer it. So if the committee chose to defer it for up to a year, we would be in agreement with that, but our position is that they need to go through a different process. Um, and during that time in the year, they may go through a pre-consultation and end up going through that process anyway. Thank you. Well, I honestly feel I agree with staff on this, right? Uh, on this application, uh, MTO provided uh, this response is general. I don't see even if any other property would have been asked, if this is the same. The study, if it's an ongoing study and they have not completed yet, I don't think so. Like, uh, in my opinion, uh, there's a much change. And as staff mentioned, this is more of a OPA than, than uh, coming just for the severance here in the committee. Uh, it's up to the committee how they want to deal with. Uh, I am okay both ways, even though I don't feel they're uh, even if we are going to defer for not to, not to exceed uh, one year, uh, that's what uh, we are suggesting. Uh, either way, I'm fine. Whatever the way the committee feels, looking for more, uh, uh, more on this. Uh, whatever the way the committee chooses to, uh, I'm okay with. Yes, Mr. Stoffer. I'll put forward a motion. A motion to. Um support staff's recommendation. Motion to support staff's recommendation by Ms. Stoffler. Do we have a seconder of this motion? 
Uh, seconded by uh, Mr. Cope. All in favour? Thank you, committee. Like clarity in that staff's recommendation is the staff report to refuse the application. Yep. Yep. Thank you. If I may, to the secretary treasurer, there's two associated minor variances with this as well. If we are considering them at the same time or later, I apologize. Through the chair, um, I did call all three of them at the same time for consideration. Yeah. Calling application A nineteen one twenty three, Mohammed and Shamin Razaz. The property is located at 20 Aylesbury Drive. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Mohammed Razak. Uh -huh. I live in 20 Aylesbury Drive uh, since last almost uh, six, and a, six and a half years. Uh -huh. <coughs> Through the chair, I must apologize. I did overlook application A19122. <coughs> Perhaps we should be dealing with that one. I'm so sorry. Amanda Nelson and Desmond Nelson at 15 New Hampshire. One second. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I moved it aside with the consent application. Okay. Sorry, sir. For the finish. No problem. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Committee members, my name is Mark Marino. I'm representing the property owner. Mr. Chairman, we're before the committee today to seek relief from the zoning bylaw to cover an existing uh, rear yard basement walkout. We are seeking the following variance. Maximum coverage is 30%, proposing 44.8%. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to point out the following. It is my understanding the house without the walkout roof is already uh, over by coverage by 43.34%. The proposed uh, roof is only... Uh, 4.9 meters squared, which is 1.46% of the lot area. Uh, it is my understanding there's no objection from neighbors, and it's also my understanding there's no objection from city staff. I would be pleased to answer any of your questions. Okay, committee members, any comment, question at this point? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? The application A19-122 is supportable subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Two, failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Do you understand yes. and accept? Yes, I agree. Okay, no further business. Looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to receive staff recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Doppler. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Calling application uh, A19123 for Mohammed and Shamin Razaz, and the property is at 20 Aylesbury Drive. Good morning, sir. Good morning again. <laughs> My name is Mohammed Razak. Uh -huh. I'm living in uh, Brampton last 20 years. Uh -huh. And then this just uh, 16 and a half years. And I have this door side and just uh, since last six years. Uh -huh. And I have no any issue, any complaint with neighbors. I always good with them. Keep clean the sidewalk because of the school. So look after the Canada Post Office boxes over there. I always keep cleaning them. I always helping my neighbors and be good with my uh, neighborhood communities. And my door is sir, in the same line in my, my porch line. And my step line is the same. It's not out of uh, a way. And this door is not even visible, covered with the plants. If I put more or few plants, it's going to be total covered up. 
and I don't have any other point where we can make side entrance door because my backyard is not attached with the basement direct. Otherwise, we can make it side entrance in the back, from the backyard. Only this is uh, the place where, where the builder pointed you can make the side entrance. And we have this door for, uh, since last six years and nobody have complained, nobody have uh, issues. And uh, this is in my own property. I still have uh, four to five feet more my property line. So I really request if uh, you guys leave it, my door open because this is the door I have uh, emergency entrance for the basement. Okay, thank you. We have two wonderful women sitting on this committee, so please don't refer us, guys. <laughs> anyway, okay, committee members, any comments uh, or questions? Seeing none at this point. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this matter? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, staff are not supportive of the application. Um, just the below grade entrance um, is in the exterior side yard without any permanent screening and totally exposed to public view, uh, whereas the zoning bylaw prohibit a below grade entrance to be in the exterior side yard. For this reason, um, this property may not be the uh, right property to have such um, entrance. And for the second variance, um, the driveway uh, width of 8.4 meters is being proposed. Mm -hmm. And the driveway width can support um, a vehicle parking parallel to the street on the apron of the driveway, which will adversely impact the street view. For this reason, staff are not supportive of the second variance either. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any members, any? Uh, Through you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, first, uh, a comment. I have to say your property is beautiful, done a beautiful job. I actually walk right past the entrance to the basement when I come there. Um, uh, so that may not affect how we rule, but I just wanted to tell you it's, it's a beautifully maintained and uh, landscaped property. Uh, the second thing is the, the driveway. Uh, I was there yesterday on Sunday. There was a car parked, as the staff had indicated, um, and there were two more on the street. So you actually had a grouping of five vehicles, which um, I don't think I, I personally could support. Um, but just in terms of the basement entrance, I understand from staff's comments that it is not uh, allowed based on the bylaw. Uh, but a couple of questions. One, how does this appear before us today, um, I think it says that there's an order to comply, but was it a neighbor's complaint or, or how do we find this in front of us today? Through you, Mr. Chair, I, I can't tell you the origin uh, of the complaint, but I can confirm that there is an order to comply on the property for construction without a permit. Thank you. Um, and sorry, just to follow up, in terms of um, not meeting the bylaw. I recognize that. I, I, I tend to support staff um, typically um, almost in every application that we have before us, but I, I do find that this is a, a really well done um, entrance. So I'm having difficulty because it, it does blend with the neighborhood. To me, it provides a, a bit of an elevated character for the neighborhood on both sides, it being a corner lot. So if you could just elaborate for us a little bit, please. Um, so we understand there are some planting uh, which screens the entrance and the side of the stairway. However, uh, since it's not a permanent screening, so if the, plan, if the plants um, die, for example, and then the entrance would be exposed. So in the past, we supported um, site, uh, exterior side yard below grade entrance um, with the fencing properly arranged. However, in this case, uh, since there is no such permanent screening, 
uh, that's the reason we are not being supportive. Thank you. So I, I understand too if the, the property owner remains the owner of the property by virtue of the state of its current condition, I would imagine that they would replace the planting. But I understand if the home is sold, then, then we enter into a problem and putting a, a fence of any height would not be desirable at that point in time. So I guess a question to the applicant, this is actually not particularly relevant, but are you anticipating owning the property for any length of time? Yeah, I mean, I'm leaving here because my little daughter is going across the school. She's in grade four, going grade five. I have four kids, two in a uni uh, three in the universities. And uh, two live in uh, golfers. You see the five vehicle because the two of my kids visit me and they park in temporary when we visit overnight. And they live in two of living in uh, golf university. And doing one is doing engineering, one is doing microbiology. And my little daughter, unless she passed uh, middle school, then she going neighborhood high school. So I have no plan early to sell this <coughs> property right now. And I always uh, look after property nice and neat, clean. Winter time, I'm the first one who always keep my sidewalk clean, put a lot of salt, be on corner lot, from uh, 30 feet, and uh, 43 feet in the front, and 90 feet in the side. And then the Canada post, uh, the post box there, is not even my job to clean, but I always keep clean for my neighbors, so they have no problems. And everybody happy with me. Can I ask you then, why is this before us today? There's an order to comply. Was there a complaint? There are no complaints. Uh, the city inspector, the they notice it themselves. There's no complaint from their neighbors. Even the build of the school, my, my door enters is before the school even. So even the build of school, last inspector came, nobody bothered. And uh, I don't know, somehow they, my next door neighbors, they have a basement uh, they're making, and last inspector came by. And maybe they notice themselves or something, I, I asked my every neighbor, even there's someone, they want to come support me, and they were busy, and if you guys want, I can bring the letter from my old neighbors they can, who can support my applications. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anybody else who wishes to ask any question, comment, concern? I think, uh, uh, as Ms. Corozola mentioned, there's an order to comply, and they only start that uh, uh, obviously after some sort of complaint. So there, there must be something uh, there by some neighbor or some concerned person. Uh, that's why the city initiate the process. Uh, at this point, uh, whether we have more uh, discussion, or I'm looking for uh, suggestions. Uh, whatever the big committee wishes to move, move, uh, move further. All right, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I would put forward a, a motion to um, approve the below grade entrance, but to get a building permit for it. Um, the committee member has pointed out that there's a window within the stairwell that he thinks may not uh, comply with building code. Um, but my suggestion would be to refuse the, the driveway width to bring it back to what is allowed. Okay. Uh, staff, if you can please uh, assist uh, for the proper uh, recommendations in order for us to move ahead. Certainly. <coughs> Excuse me, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, based on uh, Member Doffler's um, Comment? comments, mm -hmm. I would recommend that the decision or the conditions of the decision be that variance number one to permit the below grade entrance in the exterior side yard is approved. Mm -hmm. Condition number two would be that variance number two for the driveway width is refused. Condition number three would be that a building permit shall be obtained within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision for the construction of the below grade entrance. I did hear some discussion about the screening and the mm -hmm. potential for maintaining that um, vegetation screening that you see there. If you'd like to consider imposing that as a condition as well. I would like to do that as well. Okay, so that the um, vegetated screening 
sufficient to block the view of the below grade entrance from the street shall be maintained, I would suggest to a minimum height of three feet. Okay, that's fair. Point nine meters. So I have one question. Sure. And used to be have an old post box over there, kind of post box, and they have a walkway for the to check the mail. Since they put a new box, they remove the walkway, and they put the new box front of that. I know people using the which one my extension driveway. They using that path for the checking the mail, which one I never objection anyway. So when if I remove, I put the grass, then they have no place to go check the mail. They have to go around, you know. That's how I would just request if you place a sign that do not step on my property. No, no, I'm not going to sign. No, I'm not like that. I'm just explaining. The, uh, the walkway for the post boxes, they remove it. I know they're using my extension where they did it, only uh, two and a half feet extension, one side. So they're using that path to check the mail when they park. I, I fully understand uh, what you are saying, sir. This query is more than fair. So I guess yes. you should be happy what you're getting. Thank you. Okay. So uh, you can work with the staff later on. You, you may not need to remove your entire extended portion. Maybe you can place some bench or some uh, permanent barrier, some landscaping. No? Through you, Mr. Chair, not on that area yeah. of the driveway. That's fully on the city boulevard. Yeah. Any encroachment? But uh, I'm talking on the, only on the driveway. Yeah. The portion. driveway itself is not in, the driveway itself on the private property fully complies with the zoning bylaw. It's the extension on the city boulevard. Um, that has been made. They still are permitted up to a maximum width of 22 feet of paved surface on the City Boulevard. Um, and I can confirm, again, that there are no orders to comply with respect to the driveway. At this point in time, there's no order to remove any portion of that driveway, um, except that the committee is suggesting it shall not be approved as a variance. Okay. So, uh, I guess... Uh after discussing this, uh, Ms. Duffer, uh, would you please state your recommendations? Motion to approve um, the below grade entrance. Uh, I'm going to have trouble with all the verbiage that Ms. Corzola presented us with. Um, uh, sorry, the four conditions. Uh, so one, approving the below grade entrance. The second, uh, not to approve the driveway width. The third, that a building permit be obtained within 60 days. And four, that the um, landscaping or vegetation is maintained uh, as a screen and to a minimum height of three feet. And uh, I would like to add that failure to comply. Perfect. Okay. I guess all good? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank uh, you do we have seconder? Seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome. Calling application A19125, Julius and Prio Gill. Property is located at 24 Morton Way. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Sanjeev Kumar from Centro Engineering, representing uh, owner of the property, Julius Keller Pergel at 34 Morton Way. I'm here to request a relief from the committee to permit interior side yard below grade entrance and to permit interior side yard with the existing years used to access the existing above grade side door for this property. Uh, this is the existing condition of the below grade. And my owner is aware about to, after approval, if you permits, he will go for the permit. And this uh, condition will be revised further at the stage of building the permit condition. And this will be the concept if we uh, permit. You know, we were going for the building permit, you know, at this stage. Okay, committee members, any question, comments, concern at this point? No? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
So staff recommend that application A19125 is supportable in part, subject to the following conditions. Variance number one, to permit an existing below grade entrance in an exterior side yard be refused. Variance number two, to permit an existing stairway leading to a below grade entrance in the interior side yard be refused. Variance number three, to permit an interior side yard setback of 0.44 meters to an existing below grade entrance be refused. <coughs> Variance number four, to permit an interior side yard setback of 0.77 meters to an existing stairs leading to an access, to access an existing above grade side door be approved. Um, the extent of the variance number four be limited to that shown on the attached public notice, that drainage on adjacent property shall not be adversely affected, and that failure to comply with and maintain with the above conditions shall deem it null and void. So staff's concern on this is that there are two entrances mm -hmm. on this dwelling unit and in order to access their rear yard one side has the existing stairs and the other would have a below grade entrance and that causes staff concern we are supportive of one but not both i do recall there was another application and they had the same way two doors on the same street i think about three or four uh, hearings back Committee members any uh, comments or concern Last year, I went to for uh, next uh, door uh, property, 22 Martin Way, and the same situation was approved from the committee last year, with the two two below grade entrance and the side uh, on the side above their entrance as well. But 22 Martin Way. Each and every application is different. Uh, it depends on the lot line and the size. Is, we are maintaining, sir. Uh, last year it was 0.6 was approved, 0.60 of a meter, mm -hmm. and here is 0.56 and. Uh, Right now, it's not built by uh, like a by code or building bill permit approval. So my recommendation to the client, he has to revise the well size because so we are at the, at the existing stage. So I put the existing drawing when I submitted the application. But this is my concept to reduce the well to apply and maintain the minimum passes to the rear side to go to the back. And uh, it was, uh, like I, before, I got that uh, staff recommendation. At the same time, I uh, submitted the revised drawing to the uh, assigned planner, Ms. Sien. And concerning about that, uh, we are going to revise the well size and limiting distance and everything once uh, committee approves. Uh, staff, any comment about the neighbor's property the gentleman is indicating? Yes, there is an existing variance on the adjacent property. The dimensions are different from mm -hmm. that, and the, the stair on the existing door, so where in this case it's 0 0.77, was 0 0.9, which is permitted in the, the zoning bylaw, and they did have to adjust a stair. Um, so that did allow the, the passage to the, to the rear, as the requirement is only 0.9 on that particular side. Um, in this case, the applicant has, as indicated, submitted a revised drawing. However, that has not been circulated, was not circulated as part of the application. So staff's recommendation is on the application as submitted. Uh, we can work with the applicant to see if they can amend their application at all and, and come back at a later date. However, mm -hmm. with the existing uh, variance requests, we're not in a position to support it. I think that's a fair compromise on staff's position. If uh, if you amend your application and work with the staff, we can possibly refer to a future date. That's fine, uh, because uh, he, he, he needs that uh, below grade instance to, to go for the second unit permit in the future. We all need so many things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. But anyway, uh, staff, uh, how much time you would suggest uh, we need in this case if we uh, refer? Through you, Mr. Chair, I would suggest coming back at the October 1st hearing date. Mm -hmm. So that does give us a month and a half to work with the applicant to resubmit an application. Okay. So the applicant sh uh, should be resubmitted again? Uh, yes. So we we'll, can talk to you after mm -hmm. this and okay. see if we can work on the drawings and okay. the stairs. Okay. Yeah. Sir, you are an agent, right? Pardon me? When you talk to the staff, please refer through chair. Okay. 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 Keep in mind that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, committee members, uh, uh, we would like to defer this application to October 1st. Uh, I propose 
uh, that we accept the uh, city's, uh, the staff's recommendation to defer the application to the October 1st meeting. By Ms. Marcus, seconded by Mr. Power. All in favor? Thank you. Calling application A19-126, Steeles Financial Retail Center, Inc. Property is addressed as 8025 Financial Drive. I was about to say good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Mr. Chair just walked away. I'll still say that. Uh, my name is Maurice Lukic. Uh, I am the agent. Uh, I work with Glenshner Associates. We are the agents for uh, the Steeles financial center. Um, the application, I'll, I'll keep my comments uh, short and, and brief. The application is to permit a reduction in parking. Um, specifically, uh, there is a new building being proposed. So that's that shaded building at the top left corner. If you've seen the site, you're aware that the other two, the L-shaped uh, commercial space is currently there, exists, and there is that new <coughs> Uh, building uh, that's under site plan review. So currently there's about 2,400 meters squared of GFA. The new building would be about 350. And then overall your parking requirement is the 145. So what we had chosen to do is to make sure we were deep enough into the site plan process to vet out all potential variances. So we are now confident this is the only variance that we require. So that's why we're sort of tying it in with the site plan processing. To support um, and to get hopefully positive comments, we uh, got GHD um, to do a parking study to follow the city's requirements in terms of you know what they want for, let's call it their terms of reference. So there was surveying done over a couple of weeks of the existing property. You get a number which becomes the delta, which gives you a sense of you know what is the um, parking supply or list parking demand based on the, um, the, the GFA that's there in both. Uh, when it was surveyed as well as to this day, the center is completely full, so it was a very accurate number in terms of getting that, uh, that uh, uh, demand confirmed. So staff have reviewed that report and have confirmed the content with positive st uh, staff comments, which are before you. Um, we certainly concur with and appreciate staff's positive comments, and, uh, and I won't go through the four test rationale. They've done a great job of that. I'll certainly let that speak for themselves. If you would like, I could do that too. Um, maybe what I'll do now is I'll just turn it over to the public and or let staff make their comments. And happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, committee member, any question, comment, concern? Same thing. Any, anybody in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please bring your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the recommendation of staff is that the application A19-126 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, that the owner finalize site plan approval under City File SP-12047.003, execute a site plan agreement within 120 days of the final date of the committee's decision, and post any required financial securities and insurance to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services or an extended date at the discretion of the Director of Development Services upon written request from the applicant. Two, that the requirement for parking for any combination of uses permitted in the service commercial SC1282 zone be calculated at the applicable parking rate in accordance with the zoning bylaw and shall not exceed 145 parking spaces, and that failure to comply and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Do you understand and accept these conditions? I do, Mr. Chair. Okay. If no further business, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion, motion to support staff recommendation by Mr. Cole, seconded by Mr. Doctor. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Calling application A19-127, Watercam <coughs> Holdings Limited. Property is located at 456 Varden Street East. Good 
morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair, uh, <coughs> members, and uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Kishore. Uh, I'm the agent uh, for this application. Uh, this is the existing uh, commercial plaza in the middle of the residential uh, neighborhood. Uh, and um, uh, this is in the commercial C2 zone. And there is a special section 332, which doesn't allow the commercial school. And uh, this uh, particular unit, the corner unit 21B, is our scope of work at this application. And this unit has been vacant for about two, three, two, three years. Um, and now we have a potential tenant. They want to start a small school. It's a computer programming school. And then we would like to request uh, to allow for the commercial school, even though this is not uh, by the permitted uh, use. And this is a very small school and then targeted for the immediate uh, residential neighborhood. Okay. Do I remember any question, comment, concern at this point? Saying none. Anyone in, the, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Saying none. Staff, could you please bring your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff recommendation is that application A19-127 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. That the commercial school computer programming be restricted to operate from Unit 21B. That a building permit will be obtained prior to commencing construction within the unit. And that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the um, application null and void. Okay, so you understand and accept these conditions? Yes. Okay, if no further discussion, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to proceed with staff's recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you, Thank you very much. Calling application A19-128, Golden Gate Royal West Plaza Limited. Properties, addresses 305 and 315 Royal West Drive. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, members of staff, and member of the public. My name is Dan Krasuski, um, and I'm the uh, uh, planning uh, consultant working for Royal West uh, uh, Plaza Limited. And uh, we're here to, um, with a committee of adjustment request, to allow a day nursery at the plaza at 305 and 315 Royal West Drive. Um, we've reviewed the support and uh, we're happy with the, uh, the uh, uh, recommendations to approve the uh, proposal. I just have one um, minor tweak I'd like to make to the conditions and I'll, and I'll explain why. Um, the applicant here has not, um, they don't have a daycare that's going in right away. This is sort of a business planning issue that they're working with. They want to be ready in the event that they have a, a, a place within their, their plaza that's going to be empty. So what they've done here is just basically they want to get the use in place. So um, we're happy with the conditions that uh, have been imposed with the exception of number two because we're not planning to implement um, the daycare immediately. So the idea that we would submit a basic site plan application within 60 days and then actually implement it within 120 days is something that I think we would just prefer if we just not have because we're not going to implement it immediately. This may be something that's six months, a year down the road. They have a tenant in this, in this particular spot, but they just want to be ready in the event in the future that they have a, an opportunity to put a daycare into this, this plaza. So if we could eliminate number two and then just modify number three, because really number three is the one that uh, is the controlling um, condition, because it does say that the use, use shall not be established until such time as a site plan has been approved and all related improvements have been implemented. That's, that's your hook. That's what's going to make us do what you're asking us to do and what staff wants us to do. So if we could eliminate number two altogether and just tweak number three where it gets to the point where it says established until such time as a basic site plan application has been approved <coughs> implemented that would um, um, that would be uh, something we'd much appreciate basic or limited 
Okay, we'll uh, discuss when the staff's turn comes uh, sure. into it. Uh, committee members, any comment, question, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff recommendations are that application A19128 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Uh, we concur that we can remove condition number two. Condition number three will make a slight amendment to that that use not be established until such a time, such time as the basic site plan has been approved and all related on-site improvements are implemented to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render it null and void. Okay. Uh, for the correspondence, I would like to acknowledge we have a letter from Credit Valley Conservation Authority and they have no objection. Uh, sir, you agree with staff's amended suggestions? Yes, Mr. Chair, we're, we're happy with those amended conditions. Okay, I have uh, no further discussion. Uh, I would like to move. Uh, I'm okay with the staff's uh, amended uh, recommendations. Motion to approve uh, by Ms. Duffler. With amended so, conditions? Uh, amended conditions. And just a comment. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful plaza, well maintained. It is. Yeah. And thank you for coming before us well in advance. It's thank you. Nice. Okay. Uh, seconded by Mr. Koch. Uh, all in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Application A19129, Rajeswar and Ramadevi Yalapantuli. Property is located at 81 Ecclestone Drive. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, everyone, uh, this is Rajeshwar Krishna and the owner of the property. Okay. It's an uh, application for the upper grade entrance. Yeah. We have in front of us. Would you like to add anything else beside your application? We have your application. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's uh, like when I bought it, the uh, side entrance was there. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Just a comment on that. Uh, doesn't matter if you bought from someone or you put yourself. No, my architect is working. Like he submitted the plans for the thing. Mm -hmm. He just asked me to be present here. Uh, hear what you say. Sure, 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 no problem. Uh, what I was saying that even if you bought the property as is and the previous owner has done yeah, something. Yeah, I'm ready to do the whatever uh, adjustment yeah. is needed. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, willing to do the modifications. Okay, sure. Whatever the we'll, committee suggests. We'll get to hear staff and then we'll discuss about it, okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, many members, any question, comment, concern at this point? No. Seeing none, no. anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff uh, re have recommended the following, that application A19-129 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. That the variance only be approved to the extent indicated in the sketch attached to the public notice that the above grade entrance shall not be used to access a registered or unregistered second unit, that drainage on the adjacent property shall not be adversely affected, that the accessory structure gazebo shall be removed within 60 days of the final date of the committee's decision and that removal shall be demonstrated to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services, that the owner shall obtain a building permit for the side yard entrance within 60 days of the date of the committee's final decision and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approved variance null and void. Uh, regarding condition number four in the gazebo, staff have had discussions with the applicant and he has indicated that he would be removing the gazebo. Okay, that's good. Uh, just on record, I would like to acknowledge a letter uh, by Mr. Christopher Smith uh, from 67 Ecclestone uh, Drive. Uh, 
the, these uh, opposing this application. So, committee members, uh, if no further uh, discussion, but before that, sir, do you understand and accept these conditions yes. put forward by staff? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, would like to move uh, forward, committee members. Motion to support staff's recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Calling application A19-131-190 Clark Apartments Limited. Property is addressed as 188 and 190 Clark Boulevard. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Trevor Hawkins from MHBC Planning on behalf of Real Star Management. The uh, variance boils down to converting some empty, empty space in 190 Clark Boulevard on the ground floor to three additional residential units. The project complies in all other ways with the bylaw. The variance deals with a site-specific uh, increase in the density. There was a previous variance granted in 2017 based on a land taking, which permitted a density of 315.3 units per hectare. The request today before the committee is for 317 units per hectare, so slightly less than two additional units per hectare. And we are uh, in support of staff's recommendation as well. Okay. <coughs> Committee members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none, anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Staff recommend that A19-131 is supportable and that there are no conditions. Okay, simple. I'm sure you are in agreement with that. We are fine with that. <laughs> so motion to approve by Ms. Marcus, seconded by... Yes, motion to approve by Ms. Marcus. Yes. No, with, with no, no recommendations yes. from the staff, so there's nothing yet. Seconded by Mr. Cole. Yes. All okay. in favor? Application A19-100, Shobas Sitharan. Property is located at 65 Newfield Street. Hi, uh, everyone. Good morning. This is uh, Ahmed. I'm the agent for the application at 65 Netherfield. Mm -hmm. uh, there is nothing to be added uh, other than what you have. Okay. Uh, committee members, any question, comment, concern at this point? Seeing none. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff have reviewed the application against the four tests of a minor variance and have found that the application is supportable in part subject to the following refusals and conditions being imposed. Um, staff is amending proposed condition one to correct an incorrect reference to variant six, which should be variant seven. Therefore, condition one should read that variant seven to permit a driveway width of 8.45 meters be refused and that the owner reinstates the approved maximum driveway width of 7.32 meters within 120 days of the final date of the committee's decision. In addition, staff is including an additional condition that variance eight to permit a zero meter landscape strip adjacent to a side lot line be refused and that the owner reinstate the required 0 0.6 meters of permeable landscaping adjacent to a side lot line with 120 days of the date of the committee's decision. Acknowledging both the amended and additional conditions, staff have other recommended conditions and they are as follows. Number three, that the act grade entrance shall not be used to access an unregistered second unit Number four, that the gazebo accessory structure remain of an open style construction and not be enclosed. Number five, that a fence is maintained for the rear of the dwelling to the rear property line to screen the accessory structure located in the exterior side yard. Number six, that the height of the accessory structure known as the shed on the sketch attached to the public notice 
not exceed two meters. Number seven, that drainage from the accessory structures shall be directed onto the subject property and drainage not impact adjacent properties. Number eight, that the owner removes the two structures identified on the sketch as to be removed with 120, within 120 days of the final date of the committee's decision. Number nine, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Number 10, that the owner shall obtain a building permit for the accurate side door with, within 60 days of the decision and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. And to clarify, staff is of the opinion to refuse variances seven and eight as the driveway designed for this property, which has been extended in a manner that has resulted in the removal of the required permeable landscaping adjacent to the side lot line, is capable of allowing excessive parking in the front yard on the driveway, and is not considered to be an appropriate design relative to the house and lot size. In addition, this extension is continuous to the neighboring driveway and encroaches on the fire hydrant located on the southeast portion of the property, which is a concern to staff as fire hydrants should remain easily accessible for fire hydrant and emergency services. Okay. We had some discussion last time as yes. well, right? So. Are you understand and accept these conditions? Uh, so we we had the public notice to to confirm uh, what we submit. So when I keep as uh, I submit, I understand the recommendation. But uh, when I keep uh, as as we propose. Okay. Uh, sure. Any members, how, how would you like to deal with? Uh, I recall uh, during my site visit, it's a well-maintained property. Uh, the next door neighbor is, I think, legal non-confirming use. So they have also uh, paved all the way, uh, and both the driveways are side by side, and they have paved in the same way. Uh, it just uh, looks a bit odd when we finish one side and given uh, uh, and the next door neighbor has a legal non-conforming use. But at the same time, I do agree that uh, where the fire hydrant is, that's exactly in the middle. And uh, I think at least uh, what they should do, uh, the boulevard portion uh, should come to uh, as before, like there should be no concrete, uh, given the fact that the fire hydrant is there. But in, in the event, if we are going to uh, recommend that, uh, how we are going to uh, go ahead with the neighbor, because I guess this fire hydrant is exactly in the middle. So if uh, he, uh, when I say he, if I, mean, I meant to say the agent, is going back to the owner with the recommendations uh, to bring, uh, to, to reinstate the landscaping, how we are going to work out with, uh, with the next door neighbor. Mr. Chair, the region's bylaw came into effect on April 1st, 2017 that stipulates distance separation um, between parking and a fire hydrant. This is the only application we have in front of us at this time. So as a result, we can only comment on this current application and that's the concern um, with the separation distance. And if they did reduce the driveway and remove the permeable or put back the permeable strip, then we would be um, more in compliance with the region's bylaw. And this is the only application we have in front of us at this time. Through you, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, I have no suggestions on, uh, I mean, it is the city's boulevard, so certainly the city could order one or both of those property owners to um, either come into compliance with the newly enacted region's bylaw and or the city's own boulevard maintenance bylaw. Um, I don't know that there has been any issues expressed um, explicitly by our emergency services or by our public works department or by the realty staff at this point in time with respect to that encroachment. Um, I mean, you can certainly order that the, um, 
that the city's boulevard be reinstated to permeable landscaping. Obviously, they couldn't plant around it either. It would have to be remain, you know, open and, and unimpeded. Um, uh, given that you're right, it is probably right in in between the two. Perhaps the neighbors can come to an agreement, but you're certainly at liberty to require that the city's boulevard be reinstated to within, I believe it's 0.9 meters of the fire hydrant on both sides. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Um, according to the sketch that we have, it appears that there are two feet from the end of the driveway to the property line. I think this was something we discussed the last time. And based on a photo that we have, it looks like the fire hydrant is uh, greater than two feet away from the edge of the driveway. But that's just based on a visual that we have. So um, I understand this is city property and as far as I'm concerned, it needs to be reinstated. Mm -hmm. But I think the desired impact of, of bringing the fire hydrant up to current bylaws and standards will actually not be attained. So, um, and then in terms of the neighbor, again, the paving is on their property, on the city property, are we potentially seeing them before us um, to have to address this? Because I, I think what the chair had said was correct. We find it difficult to make a decision against one uh, neighbor if the, the, the adjacent neighbor is in a similar situation. I certainly agree with the position that this has put you in by only having one application in front of you. Um, and all we can consider at this point in time is that 0.6 meters on, on the mm -hmm. application that's in front of us. And just another comment uh, uh, to the staff, sorry. Uh, the City Council has put uh, on hold on all the driveways uh, sometime till October, right? City Council has directed staff to report back with respect to options um, for the driveway permit system. As I understand, there is some um, postponement of mm -hmm. enforcement with respect to driveways. Mm -hmm. um, I don't actually think that there is an order on this particular driveway, per mm -hmm. se, um, in as much as it has been there for several years now without complaint. So there's it really doesn't apply in this circumstance. The driveway was picked up because they um, came in for the variance application. Yeah. So that's that's the only reason it's before yeah. you today. And uh, uh, even if, uh, let's say, as a committee, uh, we go ahead and we try to uh, bring that permeable landscape portion into an effect, the next door neighbor is going to remain the same and that will even further cause more of a tripping uh, f uh, because one neighbor is all the way to the edge and then two feet, uh, you know, uh, grass and then the driveway starts. So I, so I would rather go uh, with this as is because uh, unless we could bring uh, both the property owners to leave uh, that space and uh, rest of the things they have done, uh, I think, good. Their uh, side, uh, I remember uh, the below-grade below entrance uh, works uh, fine to me. Uh, any members, any questions? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, my suggestion would be um, that the uh, city boulevard be reinstated I don't think it's going to help the fire hydrant, but if we have something in front of us, I think it is city property and I think we have to respect mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the rest of the driveway, I don't know if we can um, suggest putting some benches or some barricades there so that... Uh, I guess uh, I know your intent and I, I agree with that, but there's no space for this, uh, uh, especially for the permeable uh, side. There's not much space to add uh, anything on it, so. I guess the point being, Mr. Chair, is just my feeling is it's city property, mm -hmm. and I. No, I, no, I do agree with the, with the boulevard portion, and uh, but uh, if, if, can we write it down to the next door 
neighbor to do the same or because I don't want just them to cut uh, <laughs> from fire hydrant to little piece and then they remain the same. It's the same, it's more of a, uh, someone can trip. I don't think so. We can. Uh, we are in position to write down, especially with the legal non-conforming use. Yeah, through the chair, we're we're not uh, in a position to impose a condition on an application that we're not considering. The side is for the next one. Through you, Mr. Chair, the the so best I could offer at this point in time that. is that the condition be um, that a condition be added that um, any paving remaining on the city's boulevard shall be to the satisfaction of the, um, I guess, to the director of public works, to the road, really the road operations staff that would have to be satisfied and content that that meets their requirement for both boulevard maintenance and for work on the city boulevard. Um, if they, they would have the authority to order both property owners to remove anything on their own property, on the city's property. So perhaps we should leave or add a condition that requires that they be satisfied with any work that's done on the municipal boulevard. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the rest of the committee finds uh, that satisfactory to them, I'm okay with that. Uh, for the uh, for the remaining conditions, uh, I am okay with the the permeable uh, landscape portion. I I feel. Uh, in this, uh, normally, I'm always in support of to maintain the original uh, extent for any, uh, especially the permeable uh, aspects. But in this case, uh, I'm okay with it because of uh, the situation, the being the next door neighbor and uh, and the flow. So, uh, so Ms. Carzola, would you suggest uh, this, um, for especially for the city uh, boulevard portion? this condition to be added in this? If that is the desire of the committee through you, Mr. Chair, to, to try to ensure that any work done on the boulevard specifically surrounding that fire hydrant um, will not impede the city's operations and region, um, sorry, fire services operations and use of that um, fire hydrant, then yes, I might recommend a condition that um, confirmation be received from the director of road maintenance and operations that any work surrounding the fire hydrant on the city's boulevard um, be to his satisfaction or something of that nature. We can mm -hmm. certainly finesse the wording, but it would require <coughs> approval of another department. And if that approval required removal of some or a portion of the concrete surface, then that's something that they would have to do in order for your approval of any variance to become in force and effect. Okay, I'll just. Yeah, number one. Uh, in my, in, in my uh, opinion, like we are okay with the number one, so I don't uh, really see uh, to refuse. I'm just more concerned about uh, the boulevard portion mm -hmm. because the distance we have is pretty much. Uh, if we are there to move the permeable. Uh, Ocean, then the driver will comply itself anyway. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any point of uh, reduction that concrete piece. It's, uh, to me, this uh, works uh, best at this point uh, the way it has been uh, proposed. But uh, again, committee is, uh, I'm okay for the suggestions. At this point, I think I would, uh, uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, uh, we uh, approve variance number one and uh, beside that, uh, not to be enclosed, which is three. And uh, then we add one condition, as Ms. Corzola suggested. Are we okay with that, Mary Member? Because they did not come for the driveway, they came for the entrance. An entrance, they have done good work. Uh, it's, not, it's not going to be a nice or it's all the way at the back. Uh, so I guess that's fine, and when I... <laughs> exactly. If, if I may just make a suggestion sure. for you, Mr. Chair. I apologize, you turned no off my mic. 
Um, so what, what I would recommend you do is that you're replacing condition one mm -hmm. with the newly proposed condition um, that variances seven and eight be approved to the, sorry, that the paving on the city boulevard surrounding the fire hydrant be reviewed and approved to the satisfaction of the director of road maintenance and operation. That's fair. Yeah. Many members, all good? Yes. Okay, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to proceed with the staff's amended recommendation by Mr. Power, seconded by Mr. Cope. All in favor? I guess no further application. So looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Cope, seconded by Ms. Marcus. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.